The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the Quirky Dog Podcast, inspired by some of the quirkiest dogs you can ever imagine and the owners who love them. This podcast is brought to you by the quirky couple themselves, Scott and Jess Williams. Their aim is to educate and entertain. Here's Scott and Jess. Happy Wednesday, guys. We are excited to come to you today with um, a representative from the insurance company Embrace. But first, we are going to start with the quirky tip of the day. And a few weeks ago, maybe months ago now, we did an episode on obstructions in dogs. And the quirky tip of the day was to get pet insurance if you don't have pet insurance because dogs can be friggin' expensive. Well, today, the quirky tip of the day is if you don't already have pet insurance, get it from Embrace. I recently did a little poll on my own Facebook, and um, Embrace was one of the highest ranking pet insurance companies out there with dog owners that I had been Facebook friends with. So today, we are welcoming from Cleveland, Ohio, Candace Burns to discuss a little bit more about Embrace. Welcome, Candace. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for having me. Of Thanks course. For We're excited to have you. All right. You want to kick us off here? First question I have, <laughs> Candace, if I have several dogs and I name them all the same name, <laughs> can I get one policy and then just rotate? <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> okay. well, that that well, answers my question. All right. Yeah, that's a typical Scott question. I'll field some of the more serious ones. So why um, should people choose Embrace over the other insurance companies? Great question. Well, I have lots to brag about um, our company. Not only do we offer a great product, we have a customizable coverage to fit any budget. Um, we have an A-plus rating with a Better Business Bureau. Um, we're highly rated from customers on the PetInsuranceReview.com website and other pet insurance review um, websites. Um, we have just received our six-time Best Workplaces of uh, Cleveland, Ohio, and nine years in a row for North Coast 99 um, Best Workplaces. So um, we have a great work culture. Um, we have a lot of people that are passionate and very pet-centric, not just dogs, but all kinds of animals. So yeah, that's, that's what awesome. makes us pretty awesome. What other animals do you cover everything? We only cover dogs and cats. Okay. I'm trying, but <laughs> dogs and cats only right now. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's better than nothing. I mean, the pet insurance industry really kicked off. It was kind of just like a thing. And now I feel like everyone has pet insurance. Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm so glad that it's becoming more, um, people are more aware of the different pet insurance um, companies that are out there just so they can give their pets the best life and care that they can provide. Yeah, definitely. What about um, accident just, only? Is a yeah, Jess wants me to ask you about, do you have a policy that is just for accidents if your dog gets hit by a car as opposed to cancer or something like that? Yes. So we do have an accident illness policy, and then we have an accident only policy. The policy parameters are fixed. Um, it's a $5,000 annual maximum, a $100 annual deductible, and a 90% reimbursement rate. But it's, again, nice to give our customers options. If, uh, if your dog eats a corn cob out of the trash, is that considered an accident? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty common thing, that type of uh, the obstructions, issue. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We did a whole episode on that and they just can get so expensive. You know, your baseline one is one thing, but then if there's complications and it just it can become a whole thing that people don't realize, you know, it's just can uh, get scary. completely agree. And you don't understand until you're in that situation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How long has Embrace been around? So we've been around for some time. It first started in 2003 when our original co-founders had uh, won the Wharton business, um, annual business plan. And it took a couple years to get started to find the right investors and partners. Um, it wasn't until 2006 where we sold our first policy. So we're in our 15th year now. Awesome. That's really cool. And I know it wasn't included in what we had discussed, but since you said you had such a great work culture, how many people do you guys have there at the company, um, like in office roughly? Oh gosh. I, I would say roughly in the company around 200. Okay, cool. And a lot of people are based in Cleveland or it's everywhere? So a lot of them are based in Cleveland, um, but we do have, especially since the pandemic where we've been fortunate to grow, um, we have people all over the entire U.S., from California to New York, Texas, Florida. Yeah, virtual employment has become a bigger thing now, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we have um, a few dogs ourselves, and we currently don't have insurance for our dogs. And we have 
discussed this a lot over time um, and have kind of been looking at companies ourselves. And uh, we're excited about collaborating with you guys because we have a personal invested interest too. So is there a difference if you're insuring one animal versus multiple, if you're the same household as far as premium prices go, or how does that normally work? Great question. So the policy parameters or the policy premiums, excuse me, um, can differ from um, each pet. So a few things that factor into the cost are age, breed, gender, and location. Okay. What about pre-existing? Is that like a thing in dogs? That is definitely a thing. Um, unfortunately, no pet insurance covers pre-existing conditions. Yep. Um, but we uh, adjust uh, pre-existing conditions a little differently. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a great question for when you are searching for pet insurance companies that works for you to see how they evaluate those pre-existing conditions. And you had mentioned um, the pandemic a little bit. So how did COVID and stay at home and everything affect your business? I understand the employment and the employees, but you know, did policies go up? Did it seem like more people were purchasing during the pandemic? Did you see a change at all with COVID? Well, I think everybody can agree. We saw a, a change in pandemic pets, myself being uh, included. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> but um, as far as policy increases, they were steady. We were consistently growing at a steady pace. Um, I would say our call volume increased because more people are at home and um, more things happen when you're at home and you can see things. Yeah. Yeah. But um, luckily, our policies have been pretty steady. I would think maybe it would have hurt you guys a little bit with people not being able to go into the vet's office because your brochures, I'm sure, are in there. Like, that's where they find out about you is through vets, I would think. Is that one of your main sources? That is definitely a main source, but in the digital day and age, we're all over the place. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, we have different partners. Uh, for example, we're partnered with Geico, USAA, Amica. So we service all of their um, their members or their policy holders. And um, yeah, it's it's a digital age. So we're kind of all over the place. Before okay. we get too far away, I want to ask her what kind of dog she got. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of, what, I, oh, I want to know. I got all excited about that. And then Scott was finally getting serious and asking the important <laughs> stuff. So save your question. But uh, what kind of dog did you get during the pandemic? It wasn't a dog, actually. Oh, okay. Um, I have had three dogs almost their entire lives. Oldest is a Rottweiler. Next is a Pit Mix. Um, then I have a Silky Terror. I mean, Terrier. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Those Yorkies can be a lot. <laughs> Uh, that little dog is more than both of the big dogs combined. Yeah. Um, it's usually like that. Yeah. <laughs> it is. But the pets that I have acquired, you ready? All right. We're ready. We won't so judge. Can... We're judgment free here, Candace. A weasel? What did you say? I said we're judgment free here. Don't worry. Okay. Great. Great. <laughs> um, so I have a kitten. I'm actually allergic to cats, but she was the foster. I bottle fed her and she became a dog. Oh, nice. So know how to do cats. So I treated her like a dog. So that's my, I guess that's my dog that I acquired. Um, but I that can still get insured through Embrace because it's a cat. So it's good. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> now the ones they don't cover is I have an African gray parrot. She came to me in April from a chaotic home. Wow. Awesome. I'm surprised she hasn't said anything inappropriate. <laughs> um, <laughs> if she does, it's not me. I promise. Okay. It's, it's her. And I have another horse. So I have two horses, three dogs, a cat and a bird. Hey, oh. Like a whole animal sanctuary over there. I'm done. I'm tapped out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What was your question? I'm sorry. I just got excited about the new pandemic pets. I was going to say a nice little bonus item could be uh, a little pre-need um, package that you tack on for cremations and whatnot. Oh the my other God. Ones, he's you know? so, he's so morbid. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what is part of your insurance when your I pet have finally to passes apologize. away embrace I have, steps in I, and they take care of all of the oh uh, my god I have to apologize he <laughs> used to sell funeral packages to people back in the day when he was a youngin so he's crazy that was my insurance experience <laughs> exactly oh my god so tell us about some of the larger claims that um or like uh, just some typical stuff. Like what are some things that you guys typically see? We talked about obstructions, um, just some crazy stories or some basic stats or something about what you guys see well, normally in insurance. Cancer insure. treatment's probably crazy. Yeah. Well, expensive. let's let her answer. That's why we had her on. We could have had you bullshit the whole thing. Yeah. Brain surgeries. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the most common claims we see for dogs are allergies. Okay. Um, I mean, that ranges around $150 or so per claim. Um, but the more interesting claims that we've seen, um, there was a $35,000 claim 
for a MRSA infection post spay. Oh, that's interesting. Wow. Yeah. Um, there is another $35,000 well, claim for leptospirosis. Uh-huh. Um, that, that makes more the, sense to me, but I didn't even know that MRSA was, I, I don't hear that often in dogs, you know? No, you don't. And, and these, this is, it was, I guess it was a freak. Crazy. The vet yeah. probably gave it to her. Uh, <laughs> but the biggest one is uh, $37,000 for aspiration pneumonia. Oh. Was that a bulldog? Sounds Probably. like an English yeah. bulldog. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, like, I don't know which it's standard. What, uh, yeah, standard yeah. bulldog <laughs> procedure. Yeah, that's crazy. It can get so expensive. I mean, we know that human medicine isn't expensive, but while vet costs have gone up, you know, when you run into certain situations, especially if there's complications, it adds up quick, you know, and the last thing people want to do is have to make the decision to euthanize their dog because they can't afford care. So those, absolutely. Those, I, have a, I have a question that I probably know the answer to already, <laughs> but a lot of the vets now are um, taking on a holistic vet within their practice. Do you guys cover any of the holistic treatments? And then there's also laser is another big thing for treating wounds to help move it along faster. Would that be something that insurance would cover? Yes. So as long as it's a, um, a licensed veterinarian, um, mm -hmm. it is absolutely um, covered under our insurance. Um, and as long as it's related to an accident or illness, again, that was not pre-existing prior right. to the policy, um, it's also covered under the how insurance. They, how they choose to treat is doesn't matter as far as insurance goes. Correct. Correct. Nice. Um, and uh, how does pet insurance differ from human insurance? Because so much, so much of this is we're talking deductibles, and it sounds similar, and figures go crazy. Like, what is kind of some of the strong differences between like this is how a human policy works versus this is how a dog or cat policy would work with you guys? Great question. So um, pet insurance is a reimbursement um, process. So you pay up front at the time of the claim, you submit it in, and then it gets reimbursed. Um, this is where your policy parameters come in. You can choose your annual deductible, which is one time per year. Uh, you can choose your annual maximum. That's the maximum amount that Embrace will pay out per year um, per pet. And then your reimbursement percentage. It can range from 70 to 90%, and that's essentially your copay. Um, we do not have networks, so you can go to any vet. doesn't matter if you're referred out to a specialty vet or if you have to go to emergency, or especially this day and age, if you're traveling with your pet and you're in a whole different state. It yeah. doesn't matter. Um, well, I, I bet some of those bigger claims were happy they chose higher payouts <laughs> for their, yeah. their prices. Yeah, it's crazy, <laughs> some of those price points that can happen. And then um, what things don't you guys cover? I know you said you don't cover pre-existing stuff, but are there other things? I remember, um, I don't know, it was probably six years ago now, um, I had a border collie with an iliopsoas injury and I took her to VOSM uh, for stem cell, you know what I mean? And then I had heard that some insurance companies were like even calling ilio injuries and border collies pre-existing, you know, because if it happens enough in a breed. So what are some other like certain things that you guys would just say you don't cover as an insurance company? So... Um, again, pre-existing conditions, no company covers them. Cosmetic procedures like um, ear crops, tail docks, um, anything that's routine and preventative care. But with that being said, we do have an add-on program that's called our wellness rewards that you can add on to your policy that would cover the routine and preventative care. Okay. But like dentistry and stuff, obviously that wouldn't be cosmetic as much. That would be no, covered. That's definitely included okay. under our accident illness policy. I mean, how many times do we see or hear of dogs chewing on, I don't know, bones or something and yeah. fracture too? Broke so that's... Too. Yeah, they have a slab fracture. Yeah, big mm -hmm. pain in the butt. Yeah. What about the uh, psychiatric uh, drugs that they're starting to give dogs now for anxiety? <laughs> that is the, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but that's the funniest thing to tell people is that we do cover things like Prozac. Yeah. We have, um, <laughs> that's how you're similar to uh, human insurance companies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We have a couple of dogs that have severe anxiety and um, yeah, they get their Prozac. <laughs> yeah. Well, we all need our Prozac these days. Um, as right. far as rehab and stuff goes, I know you talked about the wellness plus plan. Uh, sometimes if like, let's say we get a cruciate tear or something happened and then the dog has to go to rehab, but that person that's doing the rehab isn't necessarily a DVM. Maybe they're just a CCRP or something. Are there added policies for that or is any of that covered ever? Um, again, as long as it's related to an accident or illness, um, what I have seen fairly recently is that there are actual rehab facilities dedicated for those cruciate ligaments and other injuries. 
um, it's related to an accident or illness. Would, and as long as that was would, covered, would they need to have a vet on staff in order to write the, the to send the claim in? It has to be a licensed vet, you said, right? To diagnose. Oh, just for diagnosis. Oh, so okay. if the vet referred rehab, then that would be within the umbrella of coverage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, this is great. I'm getting excited about insurance. We're buying. <laughs> we're buying pet insurance after this. We should just go into the rehab business. Now. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. So uh, you obviously have your own animals covered, right? Oh, absolutely. And what do you think, like, what it would an average policy normally be? Like, what would more of like a middle level policy be if people insure a dog or a cat, just one individual animal? So cats are generally going to be less expensive. Yeah. Uh, regardless of the policy parameters. But um, for dogs, they range. Um, I would say the average policy cost around... Forty to fifty dollars okay. a month, um, and that's just an average price, average policy parameters, even the breeds, um, and that's where you can tailor your policy to fit your budget. Um, I personally have I'm used to the little things, so I have my policy for the bigger type of claims, like if they were hit by a car or yeah. um, you know tear a cruciate or some type of accident that was like, oh, that's really gonna hurt, put a dent in my in my financial um, situation. It so sounds like my health coverage. <laughs> Scott said it sounds like his health I coverage. I pay for everything unless I get hit by a bus. <laughs> yeah. Up to that. Well, and especially now, a lot of people are economically struggling, um, you know, with job loss or COVID or, you know, whatever is going to be happening with the economy here. So it's important um, to think like a smaller policy for accent or something. If something did happen, at least you have that peace of mind. You know, it kind of changes the way that people look at the stress level of owning an animal because it can be really expensive and very stressful. Absolutely. And I, I do want to say to anybody that is thinking about pet insurance is look into it, ask a lot of questions. Um, it doesn't matter what your, um, your, your dog or your cat's job is. We've had some people that um, hunt with their dogs. Some of them are athletes. Um, I take mine riding with me, so it's very possible that they can get stepped on by a horse. So I have larger, I, my sucky. risk for my dogs are larger <laughs> versus mm -hmm. like my mom who stays at home with her dog and, you know, she worries about every little thing. So this is where um, pet insurance can really help for everybody's lifestyles. Yeah, ease her mind. Scott said mm -hmm. the silky is probably a bad uh, one to go riding with. <laughs> Do you take That's the right. Yorkie out riding? No, <laughs> he goes out to the barn with me to stretch his legs and yeah. the horses are used to him, but he is a whole nother story. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question. Do you, um, does the industry have any kind of wellness points for healthy dogs that like year after year do not have claims? Is that like, I know with uh, auto insurance, they have accident forgiveness. Now, if you have a good record, uh, you haven't been arrested for drunk driving, things like that. Is anything like that happened in the, in the, yeah. Dog? So if there is an, um, just to give you an example, we so have just, what's you know, called a healthy pet um, deductible. Yeah. Um, each year you go without submitting an accident or illness claim. Um, we knock off $50 off of your deductible each year. It's automatic. You don't have to remind us. You don't have to um, say or do anything. It's completely automatic. Um, what is nice is um, getting a phone call or um, speaking with somebody that randomly has a claim and to say, hey, you don't have a deductible this year. So it's just a, uh, whatever their reimbursement percentage is. Yeah, that is nice. That makes it easier. And then you obviously recommend people get insurance as soon as they get the puppy. That's the best way to do it. Cause, yes. And what about pre-existing conditions like from the mother and the litter and any of that? Is Does any of that come into play or not so much? No, so we evaluate pre-existing conditions based off of the individual pet. Okay. Um, this would be great for if you're adopting a pet or acquiring a pet that's maybe a year or two old, however old, um, but you're not the first and the only owner, you don't know what's going on. That's a perfect time to get pet insurance. Um, take it to the vet right away just to have a baseline and go from there. Um, you know, things can happen. So this is why you, you start earlier than later. But Yeah. So you just got to, you know... Um pay a vet to get a good wellness exam on your, <laughs> Shut up. On your pet. <laughs> Don't I listen. mean, you could, but that's also fraud. But, you know. <laughs> yeah. Insurance fraud in the pet industry now is the new thing. Everybody's got in fraud somewhere. And then yeah. a lot of people love using care credit. It seems like, um, What's that? care credit. It's like a credit card, like a, a borrowing way for people to have, mm. um, help with their pets. How does that tie in? So I know that you guys said that 
the owner would pay and then you'll reimburse. So if they are paying on their care credit, does that affect anything with the policy? Absolutely not. Okay. So that's um, just in fact, I think it's great to have either a health, like a savings account, maybe specific for your pets, or even a credit card that you have for those expenses that you would be responsible for. Because again, we don't cover a hundred percent. So you do have some um, responsibility on your, um, on your end. And the front um, end, we, it still has to be paid for. You said, right. You guys do reimbursement mostly. Correct. Yeah. And then, um, as far as reimbursement and how that works, you know, I hear a lot of stories in the dog world and I know every situation is different based on what happened and the records and, you know, the turnaround time, but what would your average turnaround time be for a claim submitted? Let's say like, you know, the same week of the incident, what would kind of your standard reimbursement time be if it was a pretty straightforward case? So our claims, um, the average claim takes between 10 to 15 business days. Um, it's a pretty fast turnaround, especially compared to human insurance. Yeah, that's for darn sure. <laughs> and then uh, would you like send a check or well, how does that work? So um, there's an option. It's automatically a check sent to you. Um, unless you change, you can do direct deposit. So I can go right into your bank account. You can pay off whatever credit card. Or yeah, there's a lot of flexibility. That's nice. And I think overall, I get the feel that vets like like people to have pet insurance. I mean, overall, it helps them, correct? There's a lot more procedures Absolutely. being done. Absolutely. It changes yeah. the conversation quite a bit from um, having to um, basically patch up, you know, an animal and, and you know, say a Hail Mary over it because somebody can't afford the treatment that's necessary for that pet to, um, if we do have a pet insurance, it makes it so much easier. Well, hey, these are your options. You have A, B, and C, and you can actually, you know, decide what's best for you and your pet versus having to or have um, to put your make some uncomfortable decisions. Yeah, having to put your dog down because you can't afford the surgery or something. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's or terrible. even sometimes it's you know if something bad happens to the leg, some people choose amputation because it's cheaper. It just you know you get you get faced with once you get faced with a hard decision, then you're kind of like oh my god, like I never want to be in that situation again. So it is nice to have this available to people. And it sounds like Embrace is a really easy company to work with as far as that goes. The other companies that had come up, and some people may have um, these you know, they're currently insured by these companies. But when I did my little poll, people also use Trupanion, Healthy Paws, um, Nationwide, Pets Best, and Pet Plan. And then I heard Figo. I don't know if I said that right. But if you guys are using one of those companies for your pets, check out Embrace's website and see what the difference would be. It's so funny. You know, it, with, when it comes to human stuff, we're always shopping around for insurance and who's the best place to get our TV service or our phone service and constantly switching. But just because, you, you know, you think what you have has worked so far doesn't mean that you shouldn't look elsewhere too because there's definitely benefits to each company. And I had a lot of positive feedback from Embrace, which is why I reached out to you guys. So even if you're insured with someone else, you can kind of check you guys out for comps, I assume, just by going on your website, correct? Absolutely. And there are other pet um, insurance review websites that can help you um, to fit what works for you. Um, there are a couple of sites that you can do a comparable if you put in a certain, I don't know, budget or mm -hmm. policy parameters, different things pop up to, to fit. Nice. And can people like call and email with questions for additional information as far as when they're looking into getting a policy or is it kind of like you see it online and you pick one and then that's what you get? No, we encourage questions. Um, you can email us or you can call us. Um, we, um, aside from encouraging questions, uh, we want to do what's best for, again, our customers and our, our, our pets. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Is there anything we're missing that uh, people should know about Embrace? I mean, I'm sold. I'm moving to Ohio well, and working there. I'm but assuming <laughs> there's, there's no breed exclusions at this point? Uh, no, so there are no breed exclusions. Um, because there are definitely some some breeds are more way more expensive than others. That's for sure. Absolutely. In fact, the first guy that you see on our website is a Bernese Mountain Dog, which is the most expensive um, breed to cover. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm sure you guys can imagine why, but yeah. Uh, no, they, there's a lot of dog there and a lot of, a lot of stuff can go wrong. We actually had a client, it's funny that you bring that up, that had a liver shunt put in with his burner. It was yeah, a right. whole big to do and nothing against the breed. It was just a mm -hmm. random thing. But 
pretty yeah. pretty elaborate um, operation, though. You don't hear about that kind of thing that often in dogs. You know? Yeah, the dog made it through, but the first year of its life was a living hell, and it just happened to be a Bernie's Mountain Dogs. The second year of its life was uh, not easy either. <laughs> it got, it got better. It got point. better. That is funny. That is something, just from a behavioral perspective, you guys may not run into it as much, but it does, it, from our line of work, um, we're trainers and we also have the podcast, but if there is a big injury when the dogs are young, the, the way the dog's treated is different, of course, you know, because now you have this little puppy that maybe broke its femur. So now you have to carry it everywhere. So all of a sudden you like have a 70 pound dog and it's looking at you like, well, why aren't you carrying me around? You know, like it changes the way the dog's raised too. So it is good to have insurance to heal those things up quickly and make sure the dog can get on with the rest of its life. That, that brings up a question. Can you see any future where insurance would pay for training at some point in the future? Actually, yes. So Embrace actually does pay for dog training under our wellness rewards program. Mm -hmm. um, it is, that's where it's covered under. Um, so I do see a future. And What's the criteria for, for you guys to, to reimburse that? Does, it, does the trainer have to have some type of special credential or is it just that they said, yes, I did it. Here's my receipt. The yes, I did it. Here's my receipt. Okay. Um, we just to point out, we do not cover any type of shot colors or anything like that. So this yeah, is no only, tools. Yeah. This is only for the actual um, the training program or um, right. You're not going to buy crates and all that stuff for the people. <laughs> no, no. Here's your, here's your so, puppy pack. Pick your colors. <laughs> I was going to ask that though about the food. So if they're getting prescription food from the vet and it's a prescription is does that cover like a kind of like a id type, type of thing does that make sense so it does ma make sense and it's covered under our wellness rewards program okay. um and I, I that's actually another big question that people ask because they say well it's prescription food well it's not fda approved so it's not technically a prescription i agree uh, <laughs> so this is where we uh where, why we another reason why we have our a wellness rewards program to help with those costs I'm getting excited about wellness rewards and getting online and doing the whole thing. So we've had a great chat and I feel like um, we've told our listeners and viewers a ton. Is there anything we're missing that um, you want to share with everybody about Embrace or insurance or any uh, closing thoughts here that we haven't covered? The only recommendation I have is ask questions, find out what's best for you and your pet. And I think every pet deserves to have insurance. I do too. And if you don't already have it, get it in 2020. 2020 is the year to prepare. <laughs> oh, I want to ask <laughs> Candace. Years. This is the year to get it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Candace, are you, are you dealing with uh, customers directly in your position at the at the uh, business? Not, I, I do not. Okay. Not at the moment, but. Because I was going to tell everyone to call you up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'll probably still get some phone calls that will trickle in. Well, but. they have such a, a good company vibe that everyone's as friendly as Candace at the company. So you call Absolutely. Embrace and it's going to go we great. We have an awesome customer contact center that is uh, actually where I started in the company. So um, they're there to answer any questions. Uh, Monday through Friday, we service all 50 states. Um, and, uh, please call in. We'll love to talk to you. All right, for sure. And the URL is going to be included in the description, but it is getembrace.com where you can learn more about, uh, getting insurance through embrace and insuring your pets through embrace. And, uh, Candace, thank you so much for your time here today. I hope that we, uh, inspired some people to take a leap and we're going to do it. I'm telling you right now, I'm getting on the computer and I'm ready. We're going to insure my, my dog is going to get insured. His dog's going to be insured. We're going to have to, we're going to have to arm wrestle while well, he'll win if we arm wrestle, but we're going to have to pick and choose who gets what policy. We'll really find out who our favorites are now. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, if you need us, studio at thequirkydog.com. Again, Thanks, thank Candace. you to Candace Burns from Ohio and have a great Wednesday. Keep it quirky. <laughs> <laughs> The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.